Hey everyone, it's Jack, and today I'm going to take a look at the awesome power of chat GPT. Wow, this is based on OpenAI, which I think is around version 3 or 3.5 at the moment. And they're even working on 4. Wow, but this is the January 9th version, just came out. And so it's just recently been updated. The last version, I think, was December 15th. And so now we're on the January 9th version, and it's supposed to be even better than ever. And I'm just going to give my human verification here. I have a free account with ChatGPT, and so I have a link in the description below that if you want to go out and take a visit. And here we have it's showing the January 9th version here that has been updated, a little notification. And what's new? ChatGPT is really going to be a game changer in everything. And this past few months here it really has kind of been the tipping point when it comes to AI. And so I've been playing with this off and on here for a couple of months. And it is amazing. It can actually literally... 10x your productivity. There's so many things you can do with it. You can create an entire PowerPoint presentation, write a blog post, do all kinds of stuff. Of course, if you want to get ranked in Google and you're writing blog posts through chat GTP, well, yeah, I can write it all for you, but you probably want to rephrase it a little bit because Google probably can tell the difference between AI generated content and original content. So you might at least want to run it through a word spinner or something. <laughs> but anyways, I'm getting off point here. Another thing that's really cool is if you like to program, ChatGPT is great. And in fact, that's what I want to do in this video is I want to try to program something, yeah, maybe in Python and, uh, you know, maybe something fun like a game. Anyways, we'll kind of get to that. Here, what it's showing, what's new in this version, says we made more improvements to the ChatGTP, ChatGPT model. It should be generally better across a wide range of topics and has improved factuality. Well, that's good. Yeah, I know sometimes the facts aren't always 100%, but pretty darn good. <laughs> and then also a stop generating based on your feedback. We're rolling out the ability to stop generating ChatGTP's response. Wow, well, yes, that does sound good to me. So apparently, ChatGTP is getting a little too long-winded on its explanation. You can just hit stop, or if it's just taking too long, I guess you can hit the stop generating button. I kind of like the idea of that feature is there. That's a good option. So I think I'm just going to go with sounds good here, and I'll give that a bit of a click. And here's our chat, GTP, GPT, I can't pronounce that, interface. It shows that we're experiencing exceptionally high demand. Please hang tight as we work on scaling our systems. So there could be a little bit of latency in getting our answers, but let's play with this. So first of all, let's just kind of ask it something like, uh, hello, can you... Give me five creative ideas for a YouTube video, spell video, right? <laughs> uh, title for creating, yeah, we got to make it relevant too, for creating a Pong game. I think we'll do Pong in Python using chat GPT. There, that's pretty relevant for what we're doing, I think. So let me just hit that and see what happens. So now it's generating, wow, that was quick. Sure, here are five potential YouTube video titles for creating a Pong game in Python. AI Pong, building a game with Python and chat GPT, using GPT-3 for game development, creating Pong with Python. Python and AI, making a classic game with chat GPT. Pong with a twist, I like that one. Building a game with a chat GT, GPT and Python. Yeah, and then finally five is from zero to Pong. Yeah, that's cool. 
a Python and Chat GT, GPT game development tutorial. Wow, I kind of like these. Uh, actually, that was a pretty good job at responding. I'm kind of torn between four and five. You know, in fact, I might even do a mixture of that. Maybe uh, Pong with a twist. Or maybe zero from zero to Pong. Building a game with chat, GPT, and Python. Yeah, I think I'll mix five and four <laughs> together. I don't know. Anyways, I'll figure it out later. Let's press on and play a little more here. Cool. Thanks. <laughs> God, I just have to be personable. Can you give me a working example of a Pong game using Python? with Pygame. Pygame is a is a game engine for Python. So let's see what it says. Wow, sure, here's a basic example. Cool. And so now it's already printing me out a game for Pong. So you can almost imagine the possibilities with this. If you are somebody that, oh, I don't know, maybe you have a little online business and you want to sell some software online, you could probably write some kind of utility that's useful for people, maybe in whatever niche you happen to be marketing in, and market that software. And chat GPT could be your programmer. <laughs> of course, it probably helps to know a little bit about programming, you know, but even chat GPT could probably get out, get you out of some pinches. If nothing else, you'll learn a lot. So it is really rolling along here and it's producing a lot of code here. It looks like it's putting in the keys, the scoring elements, added pie game in there. That's nice. And now it's going to check for ball collision. So now it's putting in the collision code. This is really cool. So it's really just rolling along here. It looks like it's going to write the whole game. Wow. <laughs> I'm really impressed. So it's jumping down here. Now it's checking for ball going out of bounds. So it's got its bounds checking in here. Now it's clearing the screen. And then draw the paddles and the ball. And it just kind of stopped there. Okay. So... That seems to be as much of the example as it's going to give. Uh, let's see if we can get it to give us some more. So what I'm going to do is I think I'm going to highlight this, draw the paddles and ball and copy that. And then I'm going to say, thanks. Appreciate it. <laughs> can you complete the code after? And then I'll just paste in what I did there. Paddles and ball. See if it can do it. Sure. That's a good sign. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Cool. Looks like it is completing it. Nice. So where it said pie, that was actually supposed to be pie game where it ended up there. So this is cool. Now, I guess if it actually does complete it, I wonder if it'll just work. I don't know. Usually I would expect to have to fix something, but hey, let's see. Okay, so this will draw the paddles and ball, render the scores, and update the screen. The paddles are represented as rectangles to the left and the right of the screen. The ball is represented as a circle that moves around the screen. The scores are displayed on top of the screen using text. This is a basic example, but it is meant to be easily understandable. You could add more features and improve this game using Pygame's library functions. Wow. I gotta say, so far I'm really impressed. Well, heck, let's see if this will actually run. So I'm gonna say, <laughs> just to give a little compliment here, thanks, or thank you, <laughs> is better. 
You are the best. I hope you don't mind being complimented by a mere human slash ET hybrid. <laughs> And a little wink. No, no, no. I'm not sure AI has any humor, but, hey, you know, I'm glad I could help. I am a machine and do not have the capacity to feel emotion, so don't mind at all. But I'll be here whenever you need me. If you have any further questions, don't hesitate to reach out. All right, cool. Well, even though you don't want to admit it, I know you appreciate it even without emotions. So moving on, let's go and copy this code and stick it in a script and see what happens. So I'm just going to scroll up here and here we can see our last bit there and then our main code starting up here at the top. And right here we have a copy code button, which is really super handy. So I just click that. So I'm just going to flip over to Thunar here. And then I'm going to jump up and create a document. I already created a folder called Pong Game. So I'm just going to call this Pong.py. We'll just keep it simple and hit Create. And we'll just open up a text editor here. And we'll paste that code right in there. Just slide it up here so it's a little easier to see. And we'll hit Paste. And there we got all the first part of that code and now let's get the rest of it so i'm going to scroll down and then we'll just hit copy code on this one too or you can highlight it if you like but i just like the copy code button <laughs> and then where pi is i'm gonna paste that in and that kind of looks complete where i see the pi game quit at the bottom there so it looks like that might actually be a complete code so I'm just going to save that by hitting control S and then go back to my thing here and we'll just, first of all, I think I'm going to write when I double click it, it doesn't do anything. So I'm going to go into properties and then go to permissions, select, allow this file to run as a program. That'll make it executable. And now if I did double click it, it should do something. And nothing. Okay. Uh, so let's kind of find out what's up. I'm going to go into a terminal here. And then I'm just going to magnify that a bit. There we go. And then I'm just going to run this out of the terminal. So I'm going to CD into my app slash Pong game folder. And actually, if I was using VS Code, I could just use the built-in terminal. That's kind of really the way to do it. But let's do Python 3 space pong.py. And no module name, Pygame. Ah, well, that makes sense. I need to install Pygame. And I think that's something we can install right through the app. Apt. So I'm going to do sudo apt search Pygame, because I'm not quite sure exactly what the name is. We'll see what we get here. Okay, so Python 3 hyphen Pygame. Okay, so sudo app install Python 3 hyphen Pygame. We'll hit enter. And yes, we'll see how that works out. All right, now let's try running it. So Python 3 Pong, and there it is. Whoa, it's going crazy. <laughs> yeah, it looks like we do got to tweak it a little bit, but it's actually working, kind of. So that is cool. It looks like we probably got to, yeah, even the paddles are going wild. WS and up and down arrows are your two paddle keys. So that's going kind of crazy, but it is actually detecting collision there on the paddle. I see that it's returning the ball there when it hits it. So that's kind of cool. 
Let's jump back into our script and just take a look at it. It looks like it's actually working, except we just needs to mellow out the speed a little bit. So if we scroll up a little bit, we should be able to see something related to speed here. And let's see where that might be. Okay, here we go. We got, let's see, our display set, background. Here's our position and paddle speed. So that's the one thing. And it's showing our speed here at three, at the ball speed. So let's change the ball speed and let's try it at like one. <laughs> and see what that does. And then we'll just rerun it. That's better. It's still pretty fast, but the ball is kind of a little more mellowed out there. Let's try like zero point five. We'll do that point five. So we'll kind of cut that in half and see what we get out of that. And this time, let's just double click on it. There we go. Yeah, that's a little better. That's kind of more civilized. It's serving the ball there. And it looks like the scoring function's working. I still want to slow it down some more. So let's try point three and see how point three works. Yeah, that looks perfect. Uh, I think that's where we should be. Cool. Now we just got to do the paddles. So... The paddle speed, let's see, it's at zero by default. So let's scroll down a little bit here and kind of see what else we got here. Here's our paddle speed. Yeah, that's what we're looking for. So in here, we got three and minus three, depending on the direction. So I think what I want to do is I want to change the paddle speed. Let's make it the same. Let's go 0.3. And then we'll make this 0 0.3. And then we'll change that to 0 0.3 and paddle two speed 0 0.3. So it's 0 0.3 in both directions, up and down. And let's see what that does. So I'll move a paddle. Oh yeah, there we go. That's more like it. And to the other paddle with the arrows. Kind of hard to play when you're by yourself and trying to control both paddles. <laughs> uh, but yeah, there we go. Okay, so we got collision on the paddle. And it does send the ball back the other way. Very cool. So yes. Collision. Pa. Return. See if we can get a short volley here. There, I got a return. And, yeah, it's really hard to volley with yourself. <laughs> but, yeah, anyways, I can tell that it is actually working now. So, there we go. That was a nice volley. Pretty cool. All right. So, that actually worked with minimum tweaking. Wow. That is so cool. So, yeah, really, all I had to do was adjust the paddle speed, and it's essentially working. Now, if I wanted to get fancy, I could add sound to it. Probably even ask chat GPT, how can I put sound in there? Of course, then I'd need a little sound file or something, probably. But anyway, let's see. If I was kind of a newbie, what else would I want? I would probably want to make this into an executable file, because if I were going to share it with friends and so forth, they probably wouldn't have Python installed on their system. I would probably want that executable. So what I would do is probably run something like PyInstaller. Uh, and I think there's something called PyFreeze. I forgot what the other freezing <laughs> utilities are. But PyInstaller is one that I'm the most familiar with. Uh, but let's pretend that I don't know about that. In fact, maybe I'm kind of a newbie when it comes to Python programming. So I'm just going to ask... Mm, chat GPT if there's a way that I can make this executable 
So why don't I ask and see what happens? So how can I create an executable file from a Python script? And let's see if it can give me an answer. <laughs> well, he's thinking about it. Uh-oh. I might have got him stumped. I guess hit and enter helps. Hmm. I think I got him stumped. Or it's just taken a long time. I'm not sure which. Hmm. Of course, the system might be overloaded. I might have took too long, too. Sometimes if you're taking too long between chats, it'll to sleep in the background a little bit. So I might have to refresh my page. But I'll just be patient here. Oh, it looks like it's generating something. So let me just scroll down. Right there it is. Okay. Yeah, so it was there. I just didn't scroll down. All right, there's Py Installer. So there's several ways to do an executable file from a Python script. And so I was citing Py Installer. That's the one I was thinking of. CX Freeze, that was the other one uh, that I couldn't think of. <laughs> and then also uh, you can do a convert Python script, exe, py to exe, or py installer, okay, or create a batch file. So this is my favorite, py installer. So I'm going to copy and paste that command there. And that'll make it all into one file. So any libraries and dependencies and so forth will get all rolled into one file. And so with a little script like this, that's just perfect. Uh, it's worth noting that depending on the complexity of the libraries, a standard loan executable may require some additional configuration or workarounds. So yeah, if you had something really complex, it probably would. And I printed this again, I think it's because I hit enter twice. And so it kind of resubmitted the same question. <laughs> so I just kind of got the same answer there. I was just a little impatient and didn't wait. So now let's go back to our script here. Or actually, I want to go back to my console. And let's paste in that command that PyGPT gave to me. And then I'm going to backspace over here and type in pong.py. And py installer, command not found. Hmm. To go apt install py installer. I know you build a locate package. Okay. How about Python 3 py installer? <laughs> okay. Uh, let's do a search. Yeah, okay, so it looks like we got to do pip, sudo pip install, pi installer, and I think I'll make that pip3 just because it's, mm, when it's going to be more specific. There we go, yes, so that installed pi installer. So now I'm going to arrow up and rerun that command there, pi installer one file. Yay, it looks like it's working. So this should generate an executable file for us. And of course, I'm on Linux, so it's going to make a Linux executable. And so it's kind of doing its thing, and it's creating an executable from a Python script. So that way I can share it with someone that has a Linux OS. Hmm. All right. So now it looks like we have Pong PI and then we have a build and a distribution folder. So let's jump into build and there's Pong. So I'll do Pong and not Pong. And let me look at the folder again. See what I did. Probably some, oh, that's a directory. Oh, okay. It's not in here. Eh, I think I know what I did. It's supposed to be in the distribution folder, so I'm in the wrong folder altogether. <laughs> so let's just go to the dist here. There it is. That's our Pong. 
executable. So that'll do it. There we are. I just double clicked on it and we have our Pong game. So now we have an executable file. We don't have to run a script. So it's nice to have something wrapped up in a little executable that's convenient. So I'm just pasting it here into our main folder and it's working just great. So now if I go into properties and go to permissions, you can see that this is already executable. It said that you can allow it to run. So if I do a dot slash pong, I should be able to run it from the console and there it is. Nice. <laughs> Looking good. It's running snappy. And I'm going to see if I can self volley again this time but it's kind of hard to control both paddles. Okay, I got that side working. And let's see who can win, my right hand or my left hand. Well, it looks like my left hand has 21 points already. My right hand has zero. Wow. Now I got a point. <laughs> well, cool. All right, so there you go. How cool is that? So, a complete working Pong game here. And since I'm done with the console, I zap myself back over to the right side of the screen. <laughs> so anyways, a working Pong game, all with ChatGPT. And like I said, this video really just scratches the surface. It's the very tip of the iceberg in what you can do with ChatGPT. PT and all the other stuff, not to mention the fact that you have like DAL E, DAL E, which is a AI drawing where you can manipulate photos or draw your own stuff text to photo. And so that's another thing that's really cool. I created some cool stuff like uh, Granny on the skateboard going down a hill really fast. <laughs> and there's one with a cane that was drawn completely in AI and even comes up with some variations as well. That one was moderately funny. And even 3D render and pencil sketch versions. Well, hi, Petey. Back for an encore. <laughs> so, yes, this is really cool. So really, even with this, your imagination is the limit. Or maybe the sky. And like I said before, you can also edit photos. And so here's a photo I took of myself where I'm just kind of chatting on a video somewhere. And I asked Dali on Chat AI to create a background in the style of Claude Monet to do Paris in the spring. And so it gave me a spring-like background around Paris. So that was cool. So like I said earlier, tip of the iceberg. AI has finally started to come of age. We're stepping into a really exciting new period here where AI is really going to just start showing its hand and making things a whole lot easier for the rest of us. Of course, we could debate all the other possibilities, like it's going to take us over or turn us all into a bunch of lazy slobs and no one's going to be able to think anymore. Everyone's going to be cheating on their college exams, but never fear, we will prevail because that's what we do. Every new technology is scary to some people. However, I find this to be really exciting. I can see myself using this a lot in the future if I'm writing a software program of some sort and maybe I need some help. I want to come up with a function to do something and I can't quite figure out how to approach it. Chat GPT will save me a whole ton of time. Or maybe if I'm on a spreadsheet and I want to come up with some kind of formula to calculate something on the spreadsheet, I could go to Chat GPT. Actually, I can kind of see this as being the new Google. Whenever I have a certain question, I'll probably find myself in Chat GPT more than I will on Google. If I just want an answer, Google is great to get you to a website that has an answer. But if I just want a direct answer, why not? And then not to mention all the apps or websites you could create based on the open AI API that can access things for you. 
So you could provide services for all kinds of things based on the open AI. There's a ton of ways you could monetize this actually. And I might even go over something like that in the future. So in a nutshell, there's just a ton of potential with chat GPT, open AI, and this is a new paradigm. I was gonna say paradigm just to mess with you, but I didn't wanna make myself look too dumb. So there you have it, chat GPT, awesome. If you haven't really messed with it at all yet, you've probably heard of it maybe, but if you haven't really got in there and played with it yet, I recommend getting a free account logging in and just playing with it and chatting with the chat GPT. You'd be surprised how personable and human-like that the chat bot is. I think you won't regret it and you'll probably be instantly addicted. And with that, I hope this was a semi-interesting video and it was helpful. And if it was, don't forget to leave that thumbs up uh, and hit subscribe. Thanks again for watching and we'll see you next time.